DeFi is the next big thing, uh, and it does have the potential to be green, democratized, um, sustainable, and uh, really likely will be the biggest area of focus in finance over the next five or 10 years. Hey there, Midas Letter subscribers. My guest right now is Ben Samaru. He's the CEO of WonderFi Technologies, Inc. Ben, welcome. Thanks, James. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Ben, uh, give us an overview. What does WonderFi Technologies do? Sure. So our mission with WonderFi is to bring this new financial innovation of DeFi to the masses and to accelerate adoption. Uh, so really the big problem with DeFi right now is it's fragmented and it's very complicated. And there's an extremely steep learning curve and tons of obstacles for somebody that wants to get involved with DeFi. So we're tackling that. Okay. And what is DeFi? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So and it's a, and that's probably a good place to start. So I'll talk a little bit about what is DeFi and why it's important. It's a new financial system. So DeFi offers financial products without a bank, and it's really easy to get caught in the technical jargon. When you talk about DeFi or crypto, you may have had that experience before. Um, I, I think it's a lot better to just focus on the value that DeFi offers. So a couple of simple examples to illustrate. One would be borrowing money instantly without needing permission of a bank or an intermediary. And another would be earning interest, say four or 5% on your assets instead of 0% that you're earning on cash in your bank account. So with DeFi, you can lend, borrow, earn interest, trade assets all through smart contracts that can be more efficient than traditional financial products in a lot of different ways. Yeah, well, I sure would like to uh, part company with my bank. I look at the statements every month and the amount of fees involved for basic transactions is just outstanding. Um, it, isn't there going to be a great deal of resistance to a decentralized financial system by the financial system incumbents? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you're you're right for sure there just like there's been a lot of resistance over the years with Bitcoin um, from traditional financial institutions, you know, the investment community, uh, regulators. I, I think we, you know, for, for me, it sort of all comes down to uh, if DeFi offers a simpler, easier, cheaper solution, just like with, you know, technology over history, uh, you know, those incumbents will be forced to, 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 to play or they'll, they'll get left behind. And I think we've, We've definitely seen that with institutional and you know corporate adoption of Bitcoin, and we're already starting to see it with DeFi. I think Bitcoin has paved uh, you know a lot of the way for for DeFi and has brought um, you know a lot of education and um, and 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 kind of adoption to uh, some of the same targets that you know need you know need to kind of get on board uh, with DeFi. And uh, and so I think it's it's you know you mentioned around kind of the fees and and issues with your with your bank and and I, I think that's that's certainly one of the big driving factors behind you know why people are using DeFi is to sort of get away from that inefficiency um, but really the movement behind DeFi it's um, you know it's around fair and democratized access to finance so transaction fees is is one big part of that you know there's also censorship and um, you know we're using legacy infrastructure that's uh, that's decades old and, um, and, and, and potentially the biggest problem, I think, is that we've got over, you know, 2 billion people in the world that are unbanked for, for various reasons. And so in addition to solving uh, or potentially solving the, you know, the fees and efficiencies issues that, that, you, that you touch on, um, you know, this really is more accessible and, and open to everyone. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, that certainly sounds like it's got merit. Um, I see you've got some sort of Canadian nameplate investors involved in the company, which sort of lends a mantle of credibility to the whole proposition. Um, how are these people interested uh, in, in the company? And is this indicative of a general movement towards this decentralized finance future? Sure. So I'll you know, a, a little bit of background about um, a, about myself and kind of our founding team. So we've 
Uh, we've been in the fintech and crypto space dating back to 2016. Um, so we've uh, we've you know brought a few different crypto products to market. Um, we were part of the first coin capital team, which we built in 2017 and then sold to Galaxy Digital in 2018. And so we were also fortunate enough to be part of Galaxy's public listing process, which was it was one of the first, uh, if not the first um, public company in the world with crypto on its balance sheet. So a really important milestone for the industry. Um, but I give that background because we've we've worked with some of the leading companies in the space, which has sort of led to some of this support that you're talking about. Um, and so we, you know, we, we're backed by, you know, Big Digital and um, and Argo Blockchain and, you know, companies that we've been close with, um, you know, in the past. And, uh, and, and, you know, one of the key names that's come in to support us, which we're extremely, you know, excited about uh, the potential of is uh, Kevin O'Leary. So Kevin, he became a Bitcoin supporter relatively recently. And that was when the Bitcoin narrative shifted from Bitcoin as a currency to Bitcoin as a store of value. And uh, you may, as you may know, he's a big advocate for ethical Bitcoin mining and sustainability. And so he got connected with Argo, who is one of our investors, and and uh, and that's how we sort of got introduced. But when we started talking through our conversation, we quickly realized that we had a shared view that DeFi is the next big thing, uh, and it does have the potential to be green, democratized, um, sustainable, and uh, really likely will be the biggest area of focus in finance over the next five or 10 years. Sure. So to what extent is the success of your business reliant on regulatory cooperation in terms of recognizing cryptocurrencies as legal tender? So that uh, I w I'll talk about the regulatory environment a little bit. I think um, it, it, it's a really good question. I, I think the, 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 the state of uh, the regulatory environment right now is has not quite caught up to DeFi. It's a uh, it's a new concept to have these types of financial products that are available, you know, without um, a centralized institution offering them. And so I think regulators are just starting to look at DeFi. Um, but you know, Bitcoin is legal tender uh, or digital currencies is legal tender is a is a good point because it sort of shows how long the regulators take to catch up to. Uh, things like 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 Bitcoin, which I would say is you know at a, a high adoption level now, and 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 now you're you're starting to see some jurisdictions look at it, um, and you know in in North America we're finally starting to see regulation of centralized crypto exchanges, and so we're we're definitely not quite there with regulation on the DeFi side, but it uh, you know it requires some coordination, um, potentially self regulatory measures. Uh, because a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of DeFi is based around smart contracts carrying out the functions that an intermediary would. So it all comes down to security, how it's designed uh, and how it's structured. So there'll be a, a kind of a big collaboration uh, kind of effort there to, you know, to, to get this um, kind of on, on, you know, on board with the regulators. Yeah, it's interesting to me because the identity of a nation is tied up in its currency. And uh, to me, it's like we have El Salvador on the one side who has said, OK, we recognize Bitcoin as legal tender. You've got China on the other extreme saying we have outlawed uh, cryptocurrencies generally as a unit of trade. And mm -hmm. in the middle, you've got European and American central banks preparing to roll out a digital crypto or a digital uh, central bank mm -hmm. currency. Uh, which yeah. would clearly be competing with Bitcoin. So I'm just wondering, like, to what extent does that constitute a hurdle to be overcome versus it's inevitable and they're just going to have to get out of the way? Yeah, I think it's it's hard to it's definitely hard to predict what the different jurisdictions are going to do. And I think you, you raise some really some really good points. I think with with DeFi, the true value proposition comes around you know, being able to put those assets to work and to, you know, to earn to earn interest on them, really. So there's there's a number of different ways that, that you can do that. So I think 
I, I, I see the, the DeFi industry kind of advancing along. Um, it, there's obviously some connections into how different jurisdictions recognize, um, you know, Bitcoin and other digital currencies as, as legal tender. And, and that's, you know, probably going to, you know, facilitate and, and, and potentially expedite the adoption. Uh, but really, this is, a, you know, this is a movement sort of, you know, on its own. Um, and uh, and so we're really seeing a lot of um, yeah we're we're, we're re really seeing a lot of um, you know uh, talent coming into the space and a lot of um, you know public figures like Kevin O'Leary uh, you know Mark Cuban is a big uh, advocate for DeFi and he's backed um, uh, he's backed a you know a company in the space and I think it's um, you know the 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 comparison that comes up quite a lot really is. Uh, the Netscape Navigator comparison, which I know is, you know, is a bit overused sometimes, but um, really when, you know, when Netscape was released, it, uh, it was at a point where there was lots of stuff being developed with the internet, but it was not sort of accessible for the average consumer. Uh, and it really took that piece of software to um, open things up to your average, you know, your average consumer. And I think what, there's a lot of buzz around DeFi and a lot of talk about it, but really it's just this small sliver that is using it right now. And it is, it's crypto experts and crypto traders. And, um, and so I think the, the potential is really massive here, but it does require, um, you know, a tool, a product that is going to, uh, you know, abstract, kind of take out all the complexities and really just make it so you can go on in a couple of clicks. You don't need to know, the background and uh, and underpinnings of what's going on, uh, just like in the banking system, you don't need to know the intricacies of like how your wire gets sent or what type of system it's be you know it's uh, or, or rails are being used. Uh, and so that's that's really our view with um, with the company and kind of how we're how we're positioned within the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, is there a business for for WonderFi without cryptocurrency being legal tender? Uh, yes, I, I would say so. I think, um, you know, really, and it goes back to sort of the shift in, in narrative around um, Bitcoin as a, uh, as a payment or Bitcoin as a currency to Bitcoin as a store of value. And obviously, Bitcoin is just one, you know, digital currency. Um, but I think that's, uh, that's kind of where the narrative shifts. And it does, you know, you do see adoption of uh, of Bitcoin as you know as, as legal tender in some places, and and that really is places that have issues with their currency and with their existing banking system. So as as we see DeFi unfold and and sort of evolve, you're going to see a lot of uh, you know potentially better tools than than Bitcoin for people to get access to you know spending uh, you know acquiring things, lending, borrowing, and uh, and really going back to kind of the core value propositions of DeFi, it is, you know, how can I, how can I borrow, um, you know, in 20 seconds without having to, you know, without being at the mercy of the bank. And so for, you know, for you or I, maybe that's easier, but, you know, for somebody in a, you know, in a de developing country that uh, doesn't have a sophisticated banking infrastructure or has, you know, corruption issues or things like that, um, it, it becomes really, uh, it becomes very real. Sure. Sounds to me like this is uh, more of an Ethereum story than it is a Bitcoin story with all the smart contracts that you make reference to. I'm always trying to explain to people that you can't lump Bitcoin and Ethereum into the same category because Ethereum is a multifunction platform that also has digital currency as one of its uh, elements, whereas Bitcoin is very clearly and simply a digital currency, nothing more, nothing less. So um, is that kind of the way that DeFi is going to head is towards a, an Ethereum relationship as opposed to a Bitcoin one or other cryptocurrency? Right. I'm so positive DeFi is built on Ethereum right now. Um, going back to the transaction fees issue, which you talked about in, in traditional banking, there are transaction fee problems with Ethereum just due to sort of the volume and, and how it's architected. Um, and so there's, you know, a lot of uh, talent in the space is working on scalability solutions for Ethereum to bring transaction costs down. But, um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Built more around Ethereum, but 
at the end of the day, Bitcoin is is always going to be a part of the um, a part of the puzzle because it is the most established currency. And so, um, you know, people want to, you know people typically want to have some exposure to Bitcoin because of what it's done, you know, over the last ten years. And so, um, you know, DeFi does open up ways for you to hold your Bitcoin and you know earn interest on it uh, through you know through various uh, through various methods. Sure, you bet. Okay, yeah. um, Ben, we're going to have to leave it there for now. I could literally, honestly, talk to you for hours about this. It's uh, fascinating to me on so many levels for so many reasons that I'm going to have you back sooner rather than later, if possible. Sure. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to try to uh, get get myself positioned as an investor so I can be along for the ride. Thank you for your time today. Awesome. Thanks so much. Great to meet you. You bet. Bye for now.